All right, so in this video, we're going to be looking at finding the average rate of change between two points on a curve. Now, we're going to start with the idea that the average rate of change is just the slope between two points on a curve or function. So keeping that in mind, um, point one is going to just be a f of a. So whatever x value we choose to be a, then the average rate of change is uh, calculated from the x coordinate a and the y coordinate wherever we evaluate that function at a. And then point two is going to be b f of b. So again, b is our second x coordinate on our graph. And then uh, f of b is the y coordinate that goes with that. So the formula for the average rate of change is, again, it's just the slope. It is f of b minus f of a. So it's the y coordinate of our first point minus, or our second point minus the f, the y coordinate of our first point divided by the x coordinate of our second point minus the x coordinate of our first point. This is literally just y2 minus y1 divided by x2 minus x1. It's just that the average rate of change formula is typically given in function notation instead of coordinate form notation. But this is literally all it is. So let's look at a specific example. Uh, suppose we want to find the average rate of change of a particle um, moving along a function given by f of t is equal to 16t squared plus 3t minus uh, plus 11. So this is, this may be familiar to, this is like a gravity drop problem. Um, if you throw it up in the air, um, if we put a negative sign in front of it, it's literally gravity. Um, three, mi three, three miles per hour or whatever your units are, three miles per second, starting at a height of 11 feet above the ground. Gravity is pulling you backward. And this is gravity divided by two. This is, again, it doesn't matter what the formula means, but that that's sort of, you can think of that as the context for this. Um, between time t equals one and time t equals three. So what we're gonna find out is, first of all, we need f of one, which is gonna be negative 16 times one plus three plus 11, which is gonna give me minus two. And again, if you're thinking about like throwing it off a building, for example, and um, um, the height of the top of the building is t is height equals zero, then this is having negative height is not a big deal. For this formula, it doesn't matter what the meaning is, the process is the same. Um, in this case, we'd have negative 16. Uh, again, this would be one squared, but one squared is one. Um, this would be three squared plus three times three plus 11. And so this would give me uh, negative 16 times nine is gonna be negative 144 um, plus nine plus 11 is gonna give me plus nine plus 11. It's going to give me negative 124. So f of b is this, since b is 3. 
and f of a is negative 2 since a is 1. And so now my formula will look like negative 124 minus a minus 2. Watch your signs. 3 minus 1. So this is going to be uh, negative 124 plus 2 would be negative 122 divided by 2. It's going to be negative 61. And so that's your average rate of change. And what does that mean in this context? So we think of time in seconds. So if time is in seconds and height is in feet, since that would be consistent with the form of our formula, then this is saying that um, the um, average height that the ball that we're dropping, the particle, uh, moves per second in this time frame is negative 61 feet. So essentially it falls 61 feet per second on average. Now, this is, if you were to calculate how far it actually falls in the first second between one and two, and then in the second second between two and three, it would not be negative 61 in both cases. It would be less in one and more in the other, but we're averaging them together and getting an average of 61 feet per second. And graphically, we can think of this as essentially we're drawing a line between these two points on our graph and the slope of the line, because this is a slope formula, is negative 61. So the, the line and the curve will intersect at our two starting points. They won't be doing anything else in common, but they will intersect at those two points. The average rate of change in other contexts is also sometimes referred to as the slope of the secant line.